Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. To give God glory through your life, it is the mandate and responsibility of every believer it is the mandate and responsibility of every believer to give god glory through your life we read earlier psalms 86 particularly now verse 12. it is the mandate it's not just something you do it's not something you wish or want to do it is a mandate he said i will praise thee O lord my god with all my heart and I will glorify thy name. How long? Forevermore. It is the mandate and responsibility of every believer to give God glory through your life. That means the entire span of your lifetime should be about giving God glory. Every day, every other time. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Now, the word glory, like you may have learned, but then for the purpose of our discussion tonight, there are many words in scripture that are translated glory, but I want to work with two of them, one Hebrew, the other Greek, so that you understand the, the thinking behind the topic tonight. The Hebrew word for glory is kabod. You will find in many expressions kabod, K-A-V-O-D. And sometimes you find the V replaced with B. So K-A-B-O-D, pronounced kabod. And then in other texts, you will find kavod. In any case, here's what it means. Kabod means honor. Kabod means respect. Are we still following? It means honor. It means respect. It means distinction. It means importance. So when you talk about kabod, glory, the Hebrew expression talks about honor, respect, distinction, importance. It also means from the Hebrew expression, a measure of the worth or the value of a thing resulting in praise. A measure of the worth or value of a thing which results in praise. That means the idea of the glory is not just to be aware of the importance, the distinction, and the honor that the person or the object carries. The end point of that discovery, that knowledge, is that it makes you to praise the object or praise the person. So kabod means a measure of the worth or the value of a person or a thing resulting in praise. You have that down? Very quickly, the Greek expression of the word glory is doxa. Four words, D-O-X-A, doxa, doxa. This has a slightly different meaning even though they are similar to the word kabod. So all of them are expressed in English glory, but kabod is concerned with honor, respect, distinction, importance, a measure of the worth or the value of a person causing you to accord praise. Doxa talks about radiance. Doxa talks about splendor. It is concerned with the manifestation, the display, the flaunting of that wealth or that whatever it is. Excellence, intelligence, doesn't matter. Doxa means radiance. Doxa means splendor. Dogza also means to make visible what was once hidden so that people will see it. To make visible what was once hidden. So this revelation of glory is concerned with unveiling, making visible, making manifest that which was hidden. Are we together? While kabod is concerned with the measure of the value of a thing, likened to the weightiness of the thing doxa is concerned with the display the radiance now the word doxazo 
from where we got our topic for tonight, just, just elementary Hebrew and Greek, just to get our, our minds in the same position. Doxazo means to praise. I spelled it the first time. Let me repeat it one last time. D-O-X-A then Z-O. From the word doxa, then you add Z-O. It means to praise. Please write. Doxazo means to extol. You will be so blessed with what you will learn tonight. It means to praise. It means to extol. Doxazo means to hold in honor. Are you writing? It means to praise. It means to extol. It means to hold in honor. Three people will start running now under the anointing. I want you to please hold them. I just saw the power of God moving now. Ah. Doxazo means to praise. Mm. It means to extol. It means to hold a person or a thing in honor. It means to make renowned or to make famous. It means to make renowned or to make famous. When we talk about doxazo, it means to make renown or to make famous. You have that down? Now, this is the most concise definition of doxazo. And I want you to write it. I'll be patient while you write. Doxazo, in essence, means to make the dignity. Listen before you write. It means to make the dignity and the worth of a person or a thing to become manifest or acknowledged. The word doxazo is not merely to investigate the worth of a thing, but that you are commissioned by reason of your findings to make the dignity, to make the worth of a person or a thing to be manifest and to be acknowledged. So when we talk about doxazo, it is concerned with the revelation of the glory. Not just the awareness, not just the knowledge of the glory, the manifestation that you, are, you have a mandate to make the nations to see. Are we together? Not just that you are aware of the glory of God, aware of the wisdom of God, but that that experience leaves you with a mandate and the mandate is to make the dignity and the worth of a person, in this case God, to become manifest and to become acknowledged that other people will have to agree to everything that you have found in your experience with God. It is the meaning that is captured in the word doxazo. Very profound word. So when we talk about kabod, we're talking about the weightiness of a thing, generally speaking. What makes that thing desirable? It was an ancient system that was used to show the worth of a thing. It was used really in metals because those days the wealth was stored in metals and precious stones like gold and so on and so forth. So the heavier, the weightier the metal, the more glorious it was. So when you talk about kabod, the, the weightiness, that, that's really the capture. But now, Dogza talks about giving illumination to something that even though glorious was not known, 
While Kabod is concerned with an awareness of the value of a thing, Dogza is concerned with the revelation of that value. And then Dogzazo has to do with making your knowledge known. You are bringing other people into that experience that I have found something. I have found this about God. But keeping it to yourself is not Dogzazo. Dogzazo is the moment you become a witness. A witness to what you have found in God. Are we together now? And we are saying it is the mandate of every believer that number one, you get to know God and that in your journey to experiencing God, you will encounter many facets of his glory. And a mandate is derived from that experience. You now let the nations know what you have found in your experience. For some of you, as you explore the person God, you will find his wisdom. You will find his favor. You will find his power. You will find his riches. You'll be learning shortly. Everything you find in your experience with God becomes a mandate upon you to reveal that dimension of him to the nations. You see? So it's not something you choose to do. It's a product of your conviction. If you have not found Jaira, you cannot reveal Jaira. Your witness will be poor because you do not have enough conviction to make people see him. Are we together? If you have not found the El Shaddai as a dimension of his glory, you cannot communicate El Shaddai. There will be a, a big divide between the things you are proposing and your experience. So the technology is that you first have to experience the dimension of glory you want to sell to the nations. The dimension of God you want to reveal to the nations must first become your experience before your mandate. Listen, God never gives anybody any mandate that was not first his experience. It starts as a prophetic word. This is what I'm calling you to do. Then your walk with God leads you through a system in the spirit that makes your mandate to first be your experience. If God is calling you to carry his healing anointing to the nations, something must happen around your life to see the value of healing and the disaster of sickness. If not, your ministry as a healing evangelist will be poor. You will not be touched with the feelings of the people's infirmity because there is nothing in your experience that necessitates drawing compassion from. So you find out that the person will go through several experiences, not necessarily caused by God, but permitted by God. When you know what it means to be afflicted, and you now see the value of the healing power of God. The next time you stand before someone who is healed, there is an experience that, that can draw out the healing anointing. You see that now? Carrying out a mandate without an experience with God will make your witness very poor. You will be talking about a God and a dimension of him that is not yet a reality to you. So it will not be compelling enough to bring witness to his name. Is someone learning now? In John chapter 4, Jesus met a woman at the well. This woman had a relational problem. She had five men in her life. They were all not her husbands. I'm sure she was outcast, left as, you know, perceived to be some prostitute somewhere. Now she meets with Jesus. The sixth man was not even her husband. And she met with Jesus. The Bible says, as Jesus began to talk with her, her perception about him began to graduate. And she said, I perceive you are a prophet. She now started asking him questions as regards worship. At the end of it, the Bible says she left her water pot. She left everything and ran. You see that now? Do you know Jesus never told her, do you know that it is in your destiny to be an evangelist? He didn't have to tell her. He just gave her an experience on the strength of that experience. So for men, if, you're, if you are failing in your mandate, the problem is not the awareness of your mandate. The problem is that your experience is poor. It is too poor to put fire in you to run with it. Hallelujah. Apostle, I want to win souls. It's not mechanical. The day God gives you an experience and you see what happens to a man without Jesus Christ, your mandate of being an evangelist does not become something you have to be primed. It becomes a derivative of your experience. I tell you the reason why the witness of many of the saints is poor. 
because their experience is poor. So no matter how elaborate and well articulated the mandate is, it does not carry the power and the fire because the power is derived from the experience. Hallelujah. For Jesus to truly have to be a savior, as powerful as he was and he is, he did not cast sin out of man. His mandate to save required that he had to first become a man. Is that in your Bible? Tempted like men. There, even as God, there was still a requisite level of compassion Jesus needed to have to be a savior. If Jesus did not have that compassion, he could not be savior. So he had to walk upon the earth. He felt what men felt, the disappointment, the evil of the heart of men, the commendations, the betrayals of men. With that knowledge, he could die. And even after he died, he still went to heaven with that awareness as a man. And even though he's exalted, he's still praying for the saints because of the depth of his compassion. That everything is finished, yet he refused to keep quiet on the throne. He is still praying. I know what I faced. Someone told me I love you today and they said crucify him tomorrow. Father, have mercy on these people. Have mercy on the preachers that are on earth. I have tasted of the heart of men outside of Christ. Is someone learning? So back to our discussion. Doxazo. And unveiling a revelation of the glory of Jesus to the nations. Now, I'm going to teach you tonight the channels for manifesting the glory of God. And then I'll be teaching you how to return glory to God. This is something most believers do not know. Most believers do not know how to return or ascribe glory to God. You're going to be learning tonight. May you be blessed as you learn in Jesus' name. There are three channels for manifesting or revealing the glory of God. Now that you know what the glory of God is, a holistic capture of everything that makes God, God. But like I've taught you here, in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23, there are many expressions of God's glory. But in order of priority, there are three of them. Please look up. If you ever talk about manifesting God's glory, these three dimensions must be captured in your life. If not, God cannot be fully glorified. There are many other expressions, but the foundations as far as revealing and expressing the glory of God in the world of men is concerned is captured in this one verse. Number one, wisdom. Number two, power or might. Number three, riches or wealth. No matter how humble you are, no matter how modest you are, if you love the Lord truly and you desire to see his glory manifest, it becomes your business to have an experience with God that allows these three dimensions of him to be captured in your life. He says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. There is glory in wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. There is glory in might. All kinds of might. Intellectual might political might, relational might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. So he's not saying that the glories here are wrong. He's only saying with respect to God, your real glory should be in the fact that you know God and you understand him. But that in walking with God, these are the three pillars that are the foundations for the revelation of the glory of God. Everywhere you see the glory of God upon the earth, you find out that the channels foundationally that gives that glory expression in the world of men is wisdom, power, and wealth. And these are the three areas Satan will fight the saints to make sure they fail in these three areas. The bankruptcy of wisdom, the bankruptcy of power, whether spiritual power, intellectual power, are we together now? relational power he will fight power anywhere he sees it and then riches wisdom the outworkings the intelligence of the spirit flowing through a believer 
Look at me, please, ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell you the degree to which the wisdom of God flows through your life? That is the degree to which the glory of God will be captured and revealed in your life. Most believers do not know that destiny actualization and even glorifying the name of the Lord in the world of men is wisdom dependence. Please look at me. When you begin to walk with God, learning scripture, coming to church, investing in prayer, something begins to happen to your understanding. Are we together now? You begin to transit in your understanding and you get to a realm where you have a quality of wisdom called the wisdom of the just. I think that should be Luke 117. If I fail to get it, please look for it for me. Luke 117, I think. Did I get that right? Yes. It says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just. There is a kind of wisdom that only those in Christ can have. You have been taught here that there are different levels of wisdom. There is what we call Sophia, scientific wisdom. Wisdom that is a product of experimentation. Are we together now? Yes. There is natural wisdom what we call common sense you don't need to be advised you don't need a word of knowledge to know you don't put your hand close to fire natural wisdom there is demonic wisdom wisdom that is inspired by your fraternity with unclean spirits any spirit that is not the spirit of god and is not the spirit of the believer is called an unclean spirit because there are only two dimensions of holy spirits the first Holy Spirit is God himself who is spirit, the Holy Spirit. And then the recreated believer in Christ is also a Holy Spirit. <laughs> Are we together now? Every other spirit that is not God, every other spirit that is not the recreated believer spirit in Christ is an unclean or an unholy spirit. Are we together? When we talk about Holy Spirit, God and every other spirit that is derived from him, I should say, so that that includes angels and the rest. Even though angels are not believers, because they come from God and proceed from his presence, they also carry his holiness. Are we together? And according to scripture, angels can be unholy. The ones that were unholy were judged. Lucifer, alongside the many who have been bound today in everlasting chain. The Bible teaches us that Lucifer is not even the most dangerous of those spirits. There are spirits today that are bound in everlasting chain for the sake of the elect. There is a time for their judgment that is coming. This is what the Bible teaches. Are we together now? Yes. There are many other spirits who, um, I, I mean, our, our, our history on earth is mad with all kinds of humanoid species that are products of spirits that coexist with humans. It is true. From Genesis chapter 6, you find that and then continues right even up until Revelations. But just for you to know that the wisdom of God is very important. Listen, I have taught you that you see the power of wisdom in the quality of the decisions that you make. The proof of the presence of wisdom is the quality of the decisions that come out from your life. Because like you have learned here, you do not choose consequences. You only make choices and decisions. Are we learning now? Attached to every choice and attached to every decision is a consequence. You are not given the liberty to choose consequences. You can only make choices and decisions. And those choices and decisions already have consequences attached to them. The assignment of wisdom is to guide you using the lens of scripture and under the influence of the Holy Spirit so that through knowledge through enlightenment you can apply what you know the correct scriptural application of knowledge for your profiting is what we call wisdom wisdom is not just knowledge wisdom is the correct scriptural application of truth because truth can destroy when truth destroys it is not wisdom is someone learning now many believers 
do not have the wisdom of God working in their life. They have human wisdom. Some even have all kinds of demonic wisdom. How do you know that the wisdom of God is at work in your life? Because wisdom is connected to mighty works. You see ordinary men, but mighty results, products of your decisions. Mighty works technologically, mighty works in business, mighty works in ministry. Everywhere you see mighty works that brings glory to the name of the Lord, it was built by wisdom. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. Through wisdom, the Bible says, a house is built. Let's have amplified. Through wisdom, the Bible says, a house, a home, anything at all, when it has to do with building a life, a home, a destiny, it is built by wisdom. Great corporations are built by wisdom. Great ministries are built by wisdom. Great organizations are built by wisdom. Please hear me, believers. Every time you see mighty works that glorify God, wisdom is there. There are many believers who love Jesus, but you may never build anything mighty because the wisdom of God is not at work in your life. You don't have to be bad to lack wisdom. But if you do not have wisdom, many things will not be built in your life. You cannot fake the presence of wisdom. Your works implicate you. Did you hear what I said? You cannot fake the presence of wisdom. No. Wisdom is not one of those things you claim and say, I have. Uh-uh. There is no bragging about it. If it is not at work in your life, it will show immediately the absence of mighty works is the proof that wisdom is absent. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, there are several people today, the reason why their lives are stunted it's not just because of causes. Please listen to me. There are families today. There are great ministers. Lab Co-laborers in the gospel. Their works are small and stunted today. Not because God does not intend for them to rise. They have not accessed the wisdom of God. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you access the wisdom of God, your life becomes a wonder. The works speak. The quality of your decisions your life will change at the instance of the arrival of wisdom. Are we learning? In Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. The Bible says, and Joshua, I like that. Everywhere I see Joshua, I smile. He's talking about me. The one who has died, save Johnny, we'll meet when we get there. But as far as I'm alive, I become a representation of everything. If there's anything bad, I reject it. If there's anything good, I receive it. Dr. Mudok would define wisdom as the ability to discern difference. Is that true? Let's finish that scripture. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. What was he full of? The spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid hands on him. I like the fact that wisdom can be transferred. Does that mean someone is carrying it tonight? Yeah. Hmm. And the children of Israel hearkened to him. You see that when people don't listen to you, it's because wisdom is not flowing from you. The human spirit, born again or otherwise, can detect the presence of wisdom. Let me tell you the truth. The human spirit doesn't have to be recreated. The moment the wisdom of God is finding expression, everybody within you can know that this is not just human ideas and philosophies. It says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that no man can gainsay nor resist. Listen, if God sends you, make sure you cry for wisdom. Don't just understand your message. It takes wisdom. Colossians 1.16. Let me show you something. Or 1 verse 9. Colossians 1 verse 9, I believe. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up. Let's read together. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, uh -huh, and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. 
What makes mighty men from weak men is not their size. Mm -mm. It's not their region. It's wisdom. Show me a man who has accessed wisdom from God. You become a wonder to your world. You believe me when I tell you this. Show me a man in ministry. Show me a businessman who has by whatever scriptural means accessed the wisdom of God. Whether directly from God as he imparted upon Solomon or by submitting to vessels that carry that oil. Or wisdom that comes from scripture. When that thing lands on your life, the difference becomes clear. You believe me when I tell you this. The deficiency of results in the body of Christ is absence of divine wisdom. Now, we pride over intellectual wisdom and I'm, I'm not against that human wisdom common sense brain work these things are wonderful but you need to understand that you cannot birth the purposes of God to his expectation using the intelligence of men alone unbelievers know this in addition to all their education and their reading they will fraternize with spirits to say come and help me I cannot do this by myself it would be foolish for me and an insult on your intelligence to make you believe that Koinonia Global was built just by the idea of a man. No. You know how many ideas, organizational ideas, you need to sample in the strength of the flesh to build? No. There is a place for that. But let me tell you the truth. There is an impartation of the spirit of wisdom. When it rests upon you, the difference becomes clear. Some of the messages you see coming out from here, I have no hand in some of them. I may have studied to put them together, but some of them I go to bed, some of them while I'm praying, some of them while I'm doing something else, it comes. It's the wisdom of God. If you don't have the wisdom of God as a preacher, if you like, read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You will preach every revelation you have. You will be confused before yourself and your members. They will know you are exhausted. It takes wisdom. There is a fountain that keeps flowing. It will never end, I tell you. Our fathers have touched up this fountain and they've been preaching for 40 years, week in, week out. It never runs dry. There are great businesses that have been built today on account of wisdom. There are great organizations that have been built today giving God glory, wisdom. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? So men can lack wisdom and they can know they lack wisdom. It takes humility to come to that state of awareness. Why are my results like this? If you are not honest with yourself, and you flatter yourself, you know, I'm sure it's just one condition, things are not working, it's a lie. Takes honesty and humility and admission. Ministry can be better than this. Business can be better than this. My family can be better than this. My children can be better than this. My school can be better than this. The shop or the mall I'm building can be better than this. Why is everybody in my organization hating me? I think it's just witchcraft, it may be true. But have you tested what wisdom can do in that organization? There are many things I didn't know before. I cried unto God and I said, Father, grant me wisdom. Grant me wisdom. Grant me wisdom. When that impartation comes, it is part of the ministry of wisdom to discern people before they become. It is wisdom that will help you to see someone and know that that is going to be the greatest prayer secretary, the greatest um, Bible study secretary, the greatest pastor that will come out from you because you cannot know in the flesh. You can see somebody so stubborn, but wisdom can tell you endure. There is a giant rising out of here. If you don't have wisdom, you will drive good people from your life because you cannot see their future at that point. All leaders need wisdom. It is the ability to harness potential. You can see somebody looking all loyal and wonderful, but the Spirit of God tells you, get this person out of your organization now. Ten years from now, you will regret. It's wisdom. All leaders become true leaders because of the presence of wisdom. Are you listening now? This is very important. 
Some of you have given your cheeks to all kinds of Judas. There's left keys from Judas, right keys from, because you don't know. Jesus will say, come on to me, you will call him a demon. Judas will say, come and you will come because there's no wisdom. The ability to discern is not there. There are many of you, everybody in your life have, has access to your holy of holies. It is not wisdom. The tabernacle was built carrying three layers. There is the outer court. There are things that stay at the outer court. There is the inner court. There are people and things that stay at the inner court. Only foolish people grant anybody access to the inner chambers of your life and your destiny. It doesn't work that way. I learn by wisdom and from men that carry wisdom. Never promote people beyond their last level of honor. It is a disaster. So says wise people. When you promote this honor, you are putting a knife at your own neck. This alone can be a deliverance for someone. Are we in church? You want to see the glory of God manifest in your life? You need wisdom. You need wisdom. Apostle, but God gave me four boys. I'm tired of them. Let me tell you the truth. Your tiredness has not even started till you get wisdom. Because those boys are not the... You are, gone are the days where a parent is the only person that mentors the children. Social media carries more influence on them than many families. You will need wisdom. Are we together? Years ago, if you don't like what your children are watching, all you need to do is to off the central television and that's the end of it. Everybody goes to sleep with anger, but they go to sleep. Unfortunately, as you are offering that television, it becomes a, a more convenient viewership for the people. They can flip all kinds of things. You need wisdom. There are many unending battles in the lives of people because they lack wisdom. God comes to Solomon by night and says, ask, what will I give to you? And he said, I am young. I'm not able to lead these people. Would you give me an understanding heart to discern judgment? That was a way of asking for wisdom. And God was so impressed. He says, you had a chance to ask for the life of your enemies. You had a chance to ask for all of that because this is what you ask for. I have given to you what you desire. And in addition, I will give you the thing you did not pray for. Riches, wealth, and honor like no king has ever had. That man woke up not knowing that he had carried wisdom. The first demonstration of wisdom in his life was judging the case between two harlots. That's a very powerful revelation because the Bible says two harlots went to sleep. They both had children. Are we together now? And the Bible says, I don't know how they slept, but one slept on her child. I can spend all day teaching on that. So you can sleep on your child and never see the glory of God. Because the Bible says in, I think Luke or so, it says when they awoke, they saw the glory of God. Those who sleep and remain sleeping, sleep on everything, including their visions, including their dreams. So the Bible says the woman once slept on her child. And when she woke up in the night, she found out that her child was dead. But the child of the other was still alive. That's why you should pray in the night. Many things have happened to people in the night. It was in the night Joseph confused Rachel with Leah. Night is absence of light. It's not just darkness. Every time you make decisions without light, you are acting in the night. And many mistakes happen in the night. Seven years was added to a man's destiny. Digressing to give you a point. The Bible says Joseph, I mean um, um, Jacob in the house of Laban. Are we together now? He saw Rachel. He liked Rachel. He said, listen, let me work for you for seven years and I'll have Rachel. And by that night, my God, I rebuke night from your life. Yeah. Hear me, I prophesy to you, everything that covers you from accessing light and you are, you are groping in the night, making all kinds of destiny mistakes, may your eyes be open. The Bible says he called the darkness night and the light he called day. So day is not just afternoon or morning. Day is whenever your light comes. Darkness is you can be 12 noon in the afternoon, but it can still be night for you. 
because there is no light. Do you know how many things happen in the night? Good things do happen in the night. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They sang. Deliverance happened in the night. But trouble happened in the night. Should I tell you one more thing that happened in the night? While men slept. Which farmer comes to plant in the night? Come on, talk to me. Do you plant in the night? You rest in the night. But there is a mysterious farmer and he will come near your house sooner or later because he roams around. He's waiting for those. The moment he sees darkness over your life, he assumes you are ready to sleep. Darkness can mean spiritual slumber. I'm saying many things already to someone tonight. Darkness can mean a state where you are not conscious of spiritual things. While men slept, this mysterious farmer who does not farm in the day. No. While you are active, giving God praise, watering your seeds, watering your destiny, that farmer stays far and keeps hoping that discouragement will bring night upon you. Keeps hoping that whatever will bring night, the moment he sees your son going down, aha, uh -huh, he carries his seeds. So that you intend to plant favor, but what you are reaping is pain and all kinds of things. And you are wondering, who joined me in this farming? Because I remember the seeds I intended to sow. You see, if you farm in the day, you can know when a stranger intrudes. But when it is darkness, you will not know when someone is also throwing seeds in your farm. Again, I pray for you. May darkness be far from your life. May darkness be far from your life. You know what seeds are? Let me tell you what the farmer carries. According to the parable that Jesus gave, seeds are words. This is what makes the seeds powerful because you don't have to be at the location where the disaster should happen for the seeds to fall. You can stand from a distance and still sow. Wisdom. You need to pray for wisdom tonight. There are many of us that lack wisdom. It is clear. Everybody you brought into your life was the person sent by the devil to destroy you and you didn't have the eyes to see. What you need is wisdom. Are we together now? Yeah. Wisdom. No discernment. When trouble was about to come in an area, the person in that house left and you were the one who went and entered the house. As soon as you entered the house, the police came and said, whoever is in this house should go to the police station. You say, I'm a new tenant. I just came yesterday. They said, follow us still. Wisdom. Wisdom is connected to mighty works. I have seen many people who love God, but they cannot do much for the glory of God because there is no wisdom. Many families have become and remain small. Many destinies have become and remain small because they lack wisdom. I saw the deficiency of wisdom in my life. I knew that wisdom was beyond education. Thank God for education. They are enhancers. But let me tell you the truth. The wisdom that comes from above is an endowment of the spirit. And when it rests upon your life, wisdom is one of those things that speak immediately. Honestly, if it comes, if it actually lands on your head, it speaks immediately. Quality superior decisions. You can see someone and wisdom will draw you. Go and greet the person. And that becomes the relationship that lifts you to the next level. And people just look at your life and say, why are you just scaling height? It's like everything you touch turns to gold. That is the very assignment of wisdom. Hallelujah. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Let me tell you. The
the truth. When the wisdom of God is at work in your life, there is no problem that will not have an answer in your life. It's a matter of time. Show me a man that carries the wisdom of God. Bring any problem, spiritual problem, organizational problem, you clear out of the way. Just give him time. You will begin to see manifestations that are superhuman. Abilities and suggestions beyond the frame of humans. Let me tell you the truth, hear me. Some of you, your businesses are remaining small like this. What you need is beyond an idea. You need the help of God. Come in as his wisdom. Pastor, you may need the wisdom of God to bail you out of the reproach that stares you in ministry. You need wisdom. Let not the wise man glory. There are men that the Bible acknowledges as wise men. The wisdom of God is at work in their lives. Given by God. Given by God. Given by God. Ladies can carry wisdom. Men can carry wisdom. Adults can carry wisdom. Children can carry wisdom. When the wisdom of God is at work in your life, you don't just read verses. You draw mysteries from the verses you are reading. If you are still reading verses, you just have knowledge. The moment you can see light, in a verse light in a story the point of destiny application in any and every story the wisdom of god has arrived in your life can i tell you you will read the story of the ten virgins and close your bible that is knowledge you will read the story of noah and the ark and close your bible that is knowledge nothing from that story can apply to your life i hope you know that behind every verse there is the wisdom of god hiding and behind the wisdom of god there is the power of god that is the order the scripture then wisdom stands then power stands behind it the power does not move until the wisdom asks it to move the value of power is when it is directed by wisdom Power is like the foil, but wisdom is like the vehicle. What will you be doing with foil when you don't have a car to drive it with? Mighty organizations can rise when the believers understand wisdom. The ability to discern, the ability to know judgment. Honor is a derivative of wisdom. When wisdom is at work in you, it will let you know that there are people you don't fight in your life even if they are not born again there are people who are not castable God honors their position and God will give, make them to be at peace with you so that you will go you will try to fight them your life will be damaged in a way you cannot imagine wisdom there are Cyruses there are gatekeepers in the world of men although they are not saved the sincerity of their heart has earned them a position that God recognizes. You don't fight such people. You pray that God grants them favor with you so that the gate can be open for you. There are many foolish people that have carried zeal without knowledge to their detriment. How about honor? It is wisdom that teaches you that when you see results you have not had, acknowledge it with your heart open and you will receive from it. Wisdom. Listen. When the wisdom of God comes upon you, everything becomes a lecturer to you. Everything. You look at the ants, you are learning something. You look at men, you are learning something. You look at fools, you are learning something. You look at wise people, you are learning something. You look at plants, you are learning something. One day, I sat down somewhere and I was watching a tree and I saw leaves falling under the tree. And I was just watching quietly and the Spirit of God spoke to me he said what you are learning is called the law of reciprocity that everything that is feeding you you must also feed it to remain the leaves coming from that tree are also falling on the ground they will become manure you see that now every time you stop feeding and I had a man of God say this later that when you stop feeding what is feeding you if it dies you will die so when somebody is a destiny helper you also water that person's life by praying that what is making that person have the money to give you may it continue that is you feeding what is feeding you i'm giving you wisdom 
Aleluia. It takes wisdom for a man to understand that when you don't pray, it's not just about backsliding spiritually, it is pride. Because prayer is the highest demonstration of humility. It is proof before God that you are aware that out of the help of God you cannot do much. Prayerlessness is not just sin, it is pride. It is a declaration of independence out of the assistance of God. I can do it on my own. And the Bible says, be not wise in your own understanding. Is someone learning? I recognized the absence of wisdom in my life. And I knew that no matter the prophecy that was over my head, I would not be able to do anything much for the kingdom if the wisdom of God were not there. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing you can do with a man who has found the wisdom of God. Absolutely. Because you see, wisdom shows you the inner chambers in every palace. In ancient times, they built palaces and those palaces had fortresses. They had gates, but there were certain people called knights. They were the royal guards or the warriors of the king. They were inner chambers that had secret exits that nobody would know. They were inner chambers where the treasury of the nation was kept. The Holy Spirit can draw you by his wisdom and show you things. That means if you were supposed to come out of that, that, um, that kingdom, you only knew the door, but someone can show you another chamber and you will come out very fast. Those who carry wisdom can produce 10 years results in two months. And you will be angry and say life is not fair. No, the door you know is not the only door there. Just because they didn't follow your door does not mean they didn't follow a door. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Everybody must not follow your door to succeed. Jesus said, I am the door. That is a mystery. It means anywhere he stands, it is a door. If he stands close to a wall, you can walk through a wall, through him, and come out. It is a door. Wisdom. You want to run anything that will give meaning to life you need wisdom you need wisdom to organize your business organize your ministry organize your life put power and honor to your life there is a relationship between shame and foolishness did you hear what I said foolishness here not being an insult is the description of a person that is bankrupt of divine wisdom I want you to be tired of making foolish decisions in your life this night. Some of you, you need to repent. All your decisions from January till now, you got into trouble, you were with the police, you finished from police, they stopped you somewhere, you are in trouble right now. Every day, you are making decisions that are moving you into a place of pain. God gave you 10 million naira by January. Right now, you do not even have up to a thousand naira. It's gone. Why? Because poor decisions, which are a product of the bankruptcy of wisdom, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness, that those who seek it early will find it. Is someone learning now? Let me tell you the truth. If the wisdom of God lands upon you, my dear man of God, my dear businessman, you will marvel and wonder I give you one month with the genuine spirit of wisdom. You will be surprised to see your results. I'm telling you this. Listen, wisdom is the vehicle that speed uses to run. Wisdom is the vehicle that speed. You want to see speed in your destiny? Give speed wisdom and see what it can do. The chariot that wisdom, that speed climbs on. To fast track your life is called wisdom. It is amazing how many believers ignore wisdom and want to prosper. No. Ignore wisdom and want to excel in ministry. Apostle, but um, you, you see my life. I'm a sincere graduate, but nothing is working in my life. I sympathize with you sincerely with all my heart but I will still tell you 
you are where you are because the absence of wisdom has chained you there your liberty comes when wisdom comes history has done justice in documenting ordinary lives sometimes miserable lives that had nothing around them that looked like results but some of those people were able to access wisdom let me show you three ways to access wisdom quickly I'm still teaching on the expressions of God's glory we have a lot to cover there are three ways to access wisdom number one you can use prayer to access wisdom you can cry unto God for wisdom in prayer you can cry unto God in prayer for wisdom you can cry unto God in prayer for wisdom you can cry unto God in prayer Lord I am aware that I am bankrupt of wisdom but your word tells me that it's in my destiny in Christ to manifest wisdom you can pray your way to accessing genuine wisdom number two light from scripture light from scripture or the diligent study of scripture grants you access to wisdom the wisdom of God is trapped in his word light from scripture the diligent study of scripture gives you access to wisdom the third and final way well there are many others but I'm just maybe I should add two more well for time I'll just give you one more impartation impartation from proven careers of the spirit of wisdom impartation from proven not proposed careers proven careers of the spirit of wisdom these among many ways are the ways that you access wisdom I'll repeat it one more time for your understanding number one a cry for wisdom in prayer number two a study of scripture light that comes from it number three impartation from proven careers of wisdom and if I can buy out one more minute to talk on wisdom I will tell you wisdom is enhanced through meditation when you know how to meditate to sit quietly and ponder the spirit of wisdom begins to move that is how brilliant destiny altering ideas come out that you just keep a piece of paper in front of you praying in the spirit playing worship and saying spirit of the living God or sometimes you are not even playing worship in complete silence speak to me and God begins to download the next 10 years of your life download the next blueprint of your ministry or organization for you may you find wisdom tonight Amen. let's discuss the second channel for expressing the glory of God we're teaching on Dogzazo how the saints reveal the glory of God and how they return glory to God is someone learning so number one wisdom number two might or power very quickly I'm just touching them because I'm really my, my emphasis tonight is how God is glorified not just how the glory is manifested but I needed to say this so that it brings perspective to what I'm saying power or might is the second way the glory of God is manifest in the world of men let me tell you the truth you cannot manifest the glory of God without power spiritual supernatural power intellectual power power in and might in all its ramifications what is power the ability to produce results what is power the ability to compel compliance what is power the ability to compel desired outcomes it's called power when God wants his glory to flow through a man he grants that man power the glory of God revealed as his healing anointing if it's to flow to you now it will come through the healing power of God are we together now when God wants his glory to come to you bringing you understanding it will come through the teaching grace power you need power in your life genuine power power is beyond falling down 
and standing up. No, those are just physical expressions of the presence of the power of God and the Spirit of God walking in the midst of people, removing things and delivering things. Genuine power, the capacity to produce results. And I'm praying for someone. The requisite level of power needed in your life and destiny, especially in the seasons that are before you, I release it upon your life. Yes. Number three. What is the third channel for expressing or manifesting the glory of God? Riches or wealth. I like to call it wealth. The Bible uses riches. But write it down, please. Do you hate poverty? That's a very good thing. You have done well by hating poverty because if you like poverty, something is wrong with your understanding. You are not a bad person. You just don't understand God's program. The subject of wealth and poverty has nothing to do with flamboyancy and glitz and glamour. Are we together now? When you see poverty based on the things you see on social media, you will hate it and it does not carry anything kingdom there. But when you see poverty as a tool that empowers you to reveal the glory of God, empowers you like I've taught you to live a comfortable life, empowers you to be efficient, empowers you to fund the program of God. Now your orientation has been adjusted properly. You have added kingdom come to that concept and it changes everything. When believers begin to pursue the subject of finances outside of purpose, outside of God, outside of kingdom, it becomes a blind and a vain pursuit that just sells self and carnality leading to their destruction. This is not what we're advocating. But I can tell you, based on the authority of scripture, and like you know, poverty is bad in every ramification. It strips men of dignity and honor it cripples you from living out your destiny. It stops you from being a blessing. That part of being a blessing is an important component in being wealthy. Most people focus on being blessed. But the last instruction, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Not just that I will bless you. Can I tell you something? I was studying on fruit bearing. And I got to find out that any fruit that eats itself is termed rotten. You know what it means for a fruit to be rotten? That means it starts eating itself. Because every fruit lives to be eaten by someone else, not itself. Whatever eats itself and consumes and enjoys itself begins to rot. The principles of fruit bearing is that number one, fruits carry out the manifest fruits point the tree that birthed them when you see a mango fruit on the ground most likely the trees closer there so trees fruits are signs they point you to the tree and they carry the character of the tree that has birthed them and then all fruits are visible Maybe they are invisible fruits in the spirit, but in the world of men, all fruits are visible to the eyes. And then number three, fruits serve others. They serve a cause bigger than themselves. When they start eating themselves, they rot. So when your entire understanding of finances is just me, how I will buy a car, buy a house, live for myself, you are being a fruit that is not fruitful. Are we learning? This is very important. But wealth is very important. You cannot run a ministry with integrity without wealth. You cannot run business without wealth. You cannot take care of your children without financial resources. Settle it once and for all that you need financial resources more than you will ever realize. I'm not talking of an obsession for money. There are people who are obsessed about money. You want to wake them up, shout money. You want to redirect them, shout money. Everything around their life resolves, revolves around money. That's not what I'm talking about. 
There is no kingdom program I know that is not dependent on finances. Hallelujah. I have seen for myself as a man of God and as a leader, the necessity of financial supplies. You will not be poor. If you don't believe it, allow your neighbor receive in peace. You will not be poor. Truly, poverty strips men of dignity. I tell you, there is nothing glorious about it. It strips you of dignity. I've told you that there are three things that will happen to your life if you remain in poverty perpetually. Number one, you will steal. Number two, you will tell lies. You will not lie because you are bad. You will lie because you are poor. Wealth is a defense. It helps protect your integrity. Number three, you will compromise. You will compromise. You will do many things you should not do. There is dignity when you have wealth with vision. There is dignity when you have wealth with purpose. There is dignity when you have wealth with a heart that loves Jesus passionately and understands the assignment of wealth. Again, I'm praying for you. Whatever has robbed you and robbed your family from the dignity of accessing financial resources, here and now, in the name of Jesus, we open the door for a new season. I've told you, you will not sit under this grace and only be spiritually vibrant. In order of priority, your spiritual growth and vibrancy is my number one assignment but every other dimension of God that gives you dignity and gives you wholesome living must be added to your life Genesis 17 and verse 6 it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of not into thee out of thee that means someone who may be ordinary now for want of word by the time the word of God works on your heart, works on your mind, works on your hands, and grace is deposited upon your destiny, you will marvel at what your finances become. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you will do ministry with dignity. There are people here, you will, you will literally single-handedly sign the annual budgets of ministries by January on your own because of how much you love the Lord. You will be so blessed I'm saying it to you as a prophetic word. That you will set up an organization and your services is to identify pro-kingdom ministries and send support to them. Literally. You will filter ministries from across Africa, across the globe and literally allocate resources. Let this mission agency have this. Let this one have this. I speak it to you in the name of Jesus. I'm very, very unapologetic about the relevance of financial resources. And let me tell you one truth. Prosperity and finances does not necessarily affect your spiritual life. It's not true. If it were true, God himself would have backslidden. The one who owns the earth. His wealth has not affected his holiness nor his spiritual life. When your spiritual life is affected because of money, it's a result of poor mentorship. You were not mentored well to understand the value. It was just maybe just receive money, 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 money. No. I'm not being critical, but I think it's the balance that needs to come to the body of Christ. Once we keep fueling the lust of believers, Oh, just have money. Just claim this. Just claim that. you find a lot of visionless believers who are obsessed about money. They can kill for money. They can lie for money. They can do everything. They can backslide for money. No. That is a very poor advocacy. The same way you seek grace for prayer as a tool for your excelling. The same way you seek the anointing as a tool to represent God. That is how you must sincerely desire finances as part of the equippings. Please look at me. When you have a car to drive your children, will you be a better father? Will you be a more effective father? If God moves you from being a tenant to being an honorable house owner, 
if you take care of your family having that peace, do you think it will give you a better atmosphere to serve God? I think so. I think so. If you have enough resources and you can bless your aged parents, your brothers, your sisters, if you can send your loved ones and other children to school and they have the opportunity to go, are you a blessing doing that? There is a deception that has trapped the body of Christ. Two deceptions. Number one is an advocacy that negates the value of financial empowerment. Number two, marketing of carnality wrapped around the subject of finances. They are both deceptions from hell. Well, I've made my choice. For as long as I live, in the name of Jesus, as for me and for koinonia, you make your decision by yourself. But as for me, I've made up my mind that as I serve the Lord, it will be with dignity. In the name of Jesus Christ, that the absence of financial resources will not cripple my efficiency as a person, nor will it affect the program of God. We will serve God to the very end with dignity. Whatever it will take to win souls to the nations, God will grant the wisdom, grant the empowerment and the resources. Can I tell you the truth? I have taught you that there are two ways resources come into the hands of people. Is someone learning tonight? Number one, value. I just thought to point that. Value. If you are not valuable and your value is not needed and useful within the context of a civilization, you will be poor. There is a science to wealth. There is spirituality to wealth. But it's important you have the foundational understanding. Being superstitious over the issue of finances is childishness and even foolishness. You want to prosper, you must be valuable. It is the person who receives your value that rewards you. If you are not valuable or valuable enough, your value must be packaged, refined, and served with excellence. Hallelujah. There are many, many mediocres in the body of Christ wrapping their mediocrity around Christian sentiments and wondering why they are not prospering. If I give you a project and your project is to clean this place, even if you are praying in tongues and you don't clean it well, and it does not meet the standards of excellence, I will love you, but you will go out. Be on your way out quickly because you have not communicated value. You will not be rewarded. It's as simple as that. Show me a man who has identified his value, refined it, and served it with excellence. I show you a man who will not beg. Number two, favor through relationships. The second way financial resources come to men is favor through relationships. You are as powerful as the relationships you have. Hear what I'm saying? You are as powerful as the men that stand by you even financially to support you. The quickest way to rise and scale financially is through the ministry of men. It's favor from God, but through men. I've shared with you the story of Isaac, of, of Abraham and Lot. I've shared with you the story of Abimelech and Abraham. I've shared with you the story of Esther and Ahasuerus. I've shared with you the story of Ruth and Boaz. All of these people prospered through relationships. Who hates you does not matter. I will repeat koinonia. But who likes you matters. May good people like you. Yeah. When God wants to accelerate your journey into becoming financially blessed, he will connect you not by your manipulating your way into their lives. He will connect you by his spirit. When you meet someone of means, he will bless you according to his riches in glory. There is glory in riches. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Most likely, if you meet a billionaire, the likelihood that he will give you 10,000, um, it may not be. Because no matter how he tries to reduce it, his realm does not allow him to give you less than a particular amount. It's not pride. It's just how they are. Their unit of operation is somebody else's miracle. Whether you believe it or not, it's not I am telling you how it works. It's as honest and as simple as that. That means many of you have not received from God. 
Because if what I have said is true, then if God really reaches down to you and it does not surprise you, it has not arrived. Are we together now? Let me tell you how God blesses. Cast your net to the right side immediately. Did you see what they caught? Let me tell you how God blesses. Your wine, your oil, your flour will not deplete. And that woman lived up to it. Let me show you how God blesses. By this time tomorrow, and Samaria was in an avalanche. Hmm. For someone, whilst you are seated here, your parcel from heaven, after many, many days and many years of witchcraft operation, stopping it from arriving, whilst you are here in Koinonia, it has finally arrived the world of men. And in the name of Jesus, listen, let me tell you the truth. And I don't, I hate to sound arrogant and forgive me if I do. But even as a human being in my own little way, God has used me to extend love and compassion in the area of finances to people. And I have seen what it has done to them. This is me as a man. I've had the honor of giving somebody one naira, two naira, and I've seen how it changed their lives. How much God? What are you saying? God can end your prayer request in a moment. I'm telling you. You don't believe me? I'm not talking about finances, so, but as I just said, it, it's just compassion that came from my heart. Value, favor. Now, let me tell you the truth. Value is your own responsibility. But you see, you can have what to give and be serving the wrong people. They would still not bless you. It is the assignment of God to keep rearranging your audience till you find yourself in the midst of the people who have a recognition for what you carry. And I'm praying it for someone because you are gifted. Truly, you have worked on your gift. But the audience you have been serving are wrong audience. They don't have, listen, if you find yourself in the midst of people who are not ordained to celebrate what you carry, they can despise you even if you are a champion. When God wants to help such a man, he rearranges your audience. I have taught you here, Joseph interpreted the dream of the baker. The same gift that made him a king, but nobody rewarded him because of the person's dream he interpreted. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He remained there. But when the king dreamt and he interpreted the king's dream, immediately he became prime minister. Same gift, not an addition, just a change of audience. Let me prophesy to someone. May my God change your audience. May my God bring kings before you gatekeepers before you captains of industry before you in the name of Jesus Christ let me tell you the truth for many years I served many territories with the grace God gave me but of course it's the law of process I served many territories that had disdain for this grace that you celebrate today but when God wanted to show me mercy he changed the audience and brought you. Hear me. There are many businessmen hearing me here. What you carry can give you an international standing. But it is wrong people who have been seeing your ideas. And they will be striking a pen on great destiny altering ideas. What you need is for the right person. There are people who have been praying for you. They just don't know you are the one they are praying for. They have been praying for a secretary and yet you are close to them. You are the kind of secretary that they will, even if it's one million naira per month, they will pay you if they really discover that you are the one. Do you know a man can pray and not know what he's praying for? A man can pray and not know how his answer will look like. I'm praying for you again. The person ordained to reward you for what you carry, to reward your many years of investment, I call upon the God of my covenant tonight. Between now and the end of next month, may you find these people. May they find you. May you find them. May they find you. 
May there be a meeting point in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. When you find the man your gift was sent to bless, they will almost worship you. You will be flattered and say, you mean this thing I have despised. Hello, look up. I hope you know the people to buy the oil of the, of the wife of the prophet. Maybe they were praying, God, you mean nobody has oil? Whereas the oil they would buy was in a house, but was in a quiet jar somewhere. After the prophet spoke and it multiplied, he said, go and sell it. Meaning there are customers. You just have not seen them. There are people that when they see you, your oil will not spend the night. They will say, we have been praying for you. There are architects here. You have been meeting the wrong people. You, you should be designing cities and yet you are still begging for mini projects because the wrong audience. I pray for you. May the God of my covenant rearrange your audience. Rearrange your audience. Rearrange your audience. Can I tell you the truth? Listen to me. When the right people see your gift, they will announce to their circle. That's what makes it, the, the factor becomes so, it's like wildfire. They will call all their friends and say, the person we have been praying for, the HR consultant we have been praying for, the man of God whose messages we've been praying to hear. Whoever is praying for you, praying that you arrive, praying that you come into their space. By prophecy, I push you to their space. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hmm. Take it down for me. Are you learning tonight? So when the glory of God wants to find expression in your life, it finds expression as wisdom. It finds expression as power. It finds expression as wealth. Wealth provides possibilities. There are things you cannot do if you are not blessed. You cannot do. You can make noise and you cannot do it. It's as simple as that. I will always make reference to the privilege God has given us to hold the conferences we are holding across many nations. That has happened by the Spirit of God. It's one thing to hear God, but it's another thing to have the capacity to obey Him. There are many of you who God has given instructions to, but the wherewithal to obey is not there. Again, I pray for you one last time. In the name of Jesus, I know you have ideas but may help us start the financial journey for you. May God raise someone to help you with your rent. May God raise someone to buy you a vehicle. May God raise someone to give you a house. It's not laziness. It's called the help of God. It doesn't make you lazy. It only gives you acceleration. Receive it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sit down. Three platforms for ascribing glory to God. Three platforms were discussing doxazo. How the glory of God is revealed and how God is glorified in the life of the saints. Three platforms. You want to give glory to God through your life? I want to show you how. How does God get glory from the saints? If we have a mandate to translate our experiences with God, to reveal His glory, but then to make Him known. Remember my definition of Doxazo. Let me define it again for you. To make the dignity and the worth of a person or thing to become manifest 
and to become acknowledged. If the nations, like we always sing here, become our anthem, if the nations must see Jesus, if the nations must acknowledge that he is Lord indeed, what is the return channel? How does God get glory from the saints? Never forget these platforms you are about to hear. Anybody whose life is about this cannot fail. Cannot fail. Cannot fail. Number one, the first platform for ascribing glory or returning glory to God is when we bear fruit, fruit bearing, producing extraordinary results. Take it down for me. You want to ascribe glory to God? Bear fruit, much fruit, bear fruit produce extraordinary results in your life and I show you how God is glorified extraordinary results John 15 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit how is God glorified not just when you sing about fruitfulness not just when you talk about fruitfulness there are many people who say I love you Lord I want you to see you glorified. I'm showing it to you now. If your life is not bearing fruit, you are a liar. You don't love God. If you really love God, it's not by a false sense of pretense and religiosity. Bear fruit. Produce results. Extraordinary results. Results in wisdom like I've taught you. Results of power. When the sick are healed through his hand upon your life. When people are transformed, God is glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Listen, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest the prayer, your power. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. sing this song every time it's not because God gave us you know the same way Nigerian puts his hand and says I pledge to Nigeria my country this is the creed of a witness not the creed of a believer no you cannot do exploits as a believer revelation transitions you from a believer to a witness when you are a witness you are empowered you are enlightened as a believer, but you are empowered as a witness. There is a difference. As a believer, your jurisdiction is enlightenment, illumination. But when God wants to use you, he transits you from a believer to a witness. It is at the point of being a witness, a validator, that you are empowered. So the song says, I receive it says I manifest because if you receive alone and you do not manifest it is not doxazo I receive by experience but I manifest as a mandate 
your power, signs and wonders, extraordinary supernatural things. But the world, the cosmos, does not just need power alone. They need wisdom. They need wisdom. It is wisdom according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. And then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. The Bible says we are his workmanship. Then in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says now, I like this, to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold, not power, the manifold. The government does not want to see power. They want to see wisdom. It is wisdom that puts policies. Wisdom. The power drives out spirits, but wisdom builds the organizations. If the only thing you have is a power to cast, to bind, oh, you will not do much for the kingdom. You need power and you need wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus. Hold on. Take it higher for me. I like this part of the song because you see, you can receive his power. You can receive his wisdom. And all these extraordinary things begin to manifest. That is doxa, not doxazo. Doxazo is when he's glorified through the healing. Doxazo is when he's glorified through the lifting. Doxazo is when he's glorified through your prosperity. When he's glorified through the teaching anointing. When he's glorified, it turns from doxa to doxazo. When glorifying Jesus becomes the intent. Many believers have kabod. They have doxa. They have prophetic grace. They have apostolic power. But unfortunately, they have not translated it to help the nation see Jesus. By the time this becomes all about Joshua Selman, a building of empire, a making of names for myself, it may be doxa, but not doxazo. The moment Jesus is not the epicenter, if it is not about revealing him and glorifying him, in Koinonia we say Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. You can reveal Jesus and glorify self. The mandate was corrupted. It must be Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. One of my covenants with God. If you will let men see me, I will take you to places you never imagined you will go. You will stand before kings. You will stand before nobles. They will call you blessed. They will be the first to stretch their hands of fellowship. If you will let men see me. The mandate is not doxa. The mandate is doxazo. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. You have given me this prophetic gift. Lord, show me how you will be glorified in it. By the time you prophesy and people are clapping for you, you remind them that I am an ordinary person. But there is one who is mightier than me. He's the one who deserves the applause. Now you have turned doxa to doxazo. You've handed over the glory. You want to see Jesus glorified? Bear fruit. And then when men look at the fruit, point them. Now that you have the attention, point them to him. Points them to him. He gave you beauty. Doxa. Use the beauty for his glory. Doxazo. Now he's glorified. Esther, don't be beautiful for nothing. Use your beauty to get to the palace. Use your getting to the palace to take away her man. And then stop the killing of the Jews. Now that is Doxazo. Gideon, don't just use your ability to fight and be hiding. The purposes of God are at stake. Joseph of Arimathea, don't buy a real estate called a grave just for nothing. Make sure you preserve it because that is where Jesus will be buried. And on account of your donating that grave, we will say, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Listen to me. I tell you sincerely, I have revealed to you by this sermon one of the biggest secrets in my life. It is beyond my prayer life. It is beyond my fasting life. It is beyond Bible study. Is that I have found the wisdom in the foolishness 
of stepping out of the way and allow your entire life to be all about revealing his glory I will sing it once then you will join me breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life it's your prayer breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life listen I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted till the nations see Jesus till the nations see Jesus till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified listen to me go and register that company with the intention of revealing Jesus whilst you are praying and fasting don't just look for power Lord give me power so that they will know that I'm also a man of God you will waste that fast for nothing be glorified that is the anthem of the believer be glorified through this business Lord I'm trusting you for 10 billion naira 1 billion 1 million 100 million whatever amount and the, the intent is that I will be able to build something that gives you a name the Jerusalem temple would have become a monument but Solomon said now arise O Lord come to your resting place dog sazo this is not just brick and mortar with gold inside I have built you a house your majesty come take your place sit down let me give you number two we have to wrap up ah, God is working on someone's heart tonight purifying your motif I sense that after tonight's teaching many people are truly going to begin to see there are doors that is God's hand that has closed it by himself because there are things you need to hear this blind pursuit for money blind pursuit for results your results will not bless the nations until you connect your results with the revelation of Jesus number two how does God get glory in the life of the saints one by bearing fruit by producing results when you produce results let me tell you the truth God is glorified when you produce results extraordinary results intellectual results business results career results professional results ministerial results the end of every argument is results you can pretend around it but there is nothing you can do in the presence of results genuine results two how is God glorified in the life of the saints how do we ascribe and return glory to God are you ready number two longevity of impact the second way God is glorified is through sustained impact sustained impact let me tell you the truth there is nothing that brings reproach to the name of the Lord as rising and causing the nations to see you as representing the image and the name of the Lord then going down it's better to not even start one of the ways that God is greatly glorified is when your results last it gives people enough room to see to criticize to probe and then to repent to be convinced and to be converted when your results don't have longevity it justifies people's hatred for God did you hear what I said that means if you rise up in ministry today shouting doing all kinds of things and in two three years you just go down people will say uh-huh we've told you God does not lift all the no 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 but if you last 
after the criticisms are down, after the naysayings are down, after the ill wishes are down, you are still standing. Sooner or later, someone will start saying, no, this kind of longevity, there has to be a hand in it. The hand of God is the one who sustains results like this. He says, I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. Someone say that, for the Lord sustained me. Say it again, for the Lord sustained me. Look up please. I preached a message last year called Ichabod. I want you to go and listen to that message again. Please hear me. Whether you are in ministry, whether you are in business, I pray for you. Whatever you will make you rise up. And when people are about to celebrate God in your life, the devil just brings you down. Satan's mastery, Satan's profession is looking for those who are high up there in life and business. Our world is full of people who were once anointed, once great, once powerful, once influential, once evangelist, once Christians. Longevity. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me. Watch this now. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. Let's read the remaining line. And that your fruit should remain. If every crop that is harvested rots in 24 hours, there will be no storage and you cannot bless people. It is because of the crop's ability to withstand harsh conditions and all kinds of preservation strategies. Is that true? Those of you in agriculture, when you harvest something from the farm, the way it is like that, you, you depending on what crop, you create systems of preservation. Some of you are into poultry. How many of you, not to give you bad memories, but how many of you have seen your birds get to maybe one month, get into two months, and then something happens overnight and 100 birds just die? By evening, 100 more just die. Which one is painful? That they stole your money or that the birds died? Think about it. If the money was stolen, you say, well, may God punish or forgive the thief, whichever one he wants to do. But as for this, I'm not careless. But now you invested time. You invested everything. Just when the harvest was about to come. Nobody goes to your poultry farm and carries a chicken alive and eats it. It is in the chickens or the, the poultry's ability to stay. And then when everything is clean, it is now put in a mall, whatever it is, or served. The chef now does his work there. What we eat at the table is not the poultry that is alive there. It's the one that has lasted until it got to the table. Let me tell you the truth. Sustainability of impact brings great glory to the name of the Lord. It is one of the reasons why we honor fathers. We honor fathers because they have demonstrated that God can keep men. A man who is celebrating 40 years in ministry, 50 years in ministry, you see that now? There are many people who were not born when they started serving God. People laughed at them and said, you will not stay five years. You will not stay 10 years. I was looking at a dear woman of God now in her 80s, she was preaching. And I looked at her. I remember years ago, people used to castigate and talk about the woman. Many of those people have died and gone. And the woman in her 80s is still preaching. I said, that's right. This is my message. This is how God is glorified. Can I tell you, anybody waiting to hear that you have fallen will wait forever. Yeah. I say it to you again. Anybody waiting to hear that your company has gone down, that you are no longer anointed, that that prophetic grace is not there, they will wait forever. Yeah. There is a hand that holds the believer, except you choose to jump out of that hand by yourself. Now, let me teach you something. Do you know the higher you rise, the more painful the fall? The person who is on the ground, if he just rolls to the other side, he didn't fall, he just rolled. But the more you are elevated, it becomes a fall with respect to your current distance. If somebody falls from the top of this building, you will most likely die. If someone falls, that's why there are almost no survivors in a plane crash because of the altitude. When you have an accident with a bicycle, even a car, it's possible to have survivors. They may be injured, but they'll survive. But from the air, 
not even with the age, all of those things, most likely they will die. That means the higher you rise, you need to not just study how results are produced, but how you continue to produce results. Are we together? It is the reason why we look up to the fathers jealously and we honor them. Do you know why? The reason is because there is something. We know how to produce results too, but we don't know how to remain yet. They are the ones who will teach us how to remain. And let me teach you, if you are a young minister here, listen carefully. That you have results today does not mean you will have it in 10 years. There is a skill that the fathers have mastered through their pain, through their covenants with God that can help them remain after 20, 30 years. And this is what you must learn. I had a vision many years ago. I was called to minister somewhere. I will not mention the name of the ministry, one of the ministries of our fathers. And when it was time for me to stand in that vision, um, there was no platform like this. You would stand on the pulpit in the vision. Imagine that I had to stand here. And when I stood there, it was shaking. And I was just watching. It was as if I was going to fall. And I saw them, they were just looking and smiling at me. It was as though they were not permitted to come and correct me. But there was a way I could look at them and learn how to stand. Eventually, I found out that there was a way you put your toe that you will stand. And I woke up from that vision. There is a skill to remaining. Respect people whose results have lasted. You are in business, don't rejoice over one year profit. Find somebody who has had 15 years with different governments, 15 years with different people and learn. What does it take to remain when governments change? What does it take to remain when all kinds, there's something you can learn. I pray for you, whatever wants to abort your results, attracting the nations to see God in your life and then you just fall like a pack of cards. May my God deliver you from it. Are we learning? How is God glorified? One, when we produce results, when we bear fruit. Number two, when our results are sustained. Psalm 92, let me show you something. Verse 14, read it with me. One, two, read. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Say, I receive it. it. One more time. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. And they shall be fat and flourishing. Does that look like your destiny? That it will never be said once upon a time. You see that young lady? She was a great worshiper. You see that young man? If he prophesied upon your life before. No. In old age, they shall still bring forth fruit. In the name of Jesus. Number three. How is God glorified through the life of the saints? How do you translate doxa to doxazo? How do you reveal his glory and cause him to receive glory through your life? Are you ready? Testimonies and public declarations of his faithfulness. We're wrapping up now. Testimonies and public declarations of his faithfulness. Psalm 22, 22. Testimonies. Now you know why we place great value on testimonies. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise thee. Psalm 92, 1 to 4. Psalm 92, 1 to f- Testimonies and public declarations of his faithfulness. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Verse 2. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Verse 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, and with a solemn sound, verse 4, for thou, O Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Public declarations of his faithfulness. Psalm 96, beginning from verse 1. Follow carefully as I read. Psalm 96. 
Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Verse 2. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Watch this. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among all people. For, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Five, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Six, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Verse eight, give unto the Lord the glory that is due his name. You see there? Give unto the Lord through your testimonies and through the public declarations of his faithfulness the glory that is due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Final verse. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Let me tell you the truth. When God shows you his mercy and you keep quiet, you stop him from being glorified. Did you hear what I'm saying? It's important. I know we live in a time where sometimes certain testimonies require wisdom. Are we together now? Because there are certain testimonies that may implicate you because of the size, the nature, and the audience you are speaking to. I understand that. But within the boundary of wisdom, it is important for people to know what God has done. I tell you, if people do not know that God healed you, they will not believe he's a healer. If people do not know that God promoted you, when we call for testimonies, next week is miracle service. Every service when we call for testimonies is beyond a validation that a man of God is powerful. No. That is the reason why we don't share them in secret. And that is the reason why we give glory to the name of the Lord promise will often come up here and say who is the doer of the testimonies now when you beat your chest and say I Joshua Selman you see all the things that God has done now you know I'm anointed you see you have stopped him from being glorified are we together now testimonies 10 lepers were healed Jesus was passing but he remained there only one returned back and he said sir I just came to say thank you and he said, were there not 10 of you? In other words, you have stopped me from being glorified. Let me show you something. John 2, 9 and 10. John 2, 9 and 10. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that he made wine, watch this, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, verse 10, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. Let's read together. Everyone want to read. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. That's the expression doxazo. Manifested forth his glory. What was the result? The people believed in him. The people believed, the disciples believed. There are many people today who have believed in Jesus on account of the manifold testimonies that have come out from this altar. There are people who otherwise they would not believe God lifts except that they saw someone who God lifted who came and said, look at my evidence. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and I found that Babu I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and I found that Babu truly I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and I found that there is a way men can see the work of God in your life 
and you will see someone crying and the person goes down on his knees and say Lord forgive me for doubting you when you told me you could lift my family I didn't believe you here is an embodiment of your faithfulness now I believe the woman said come see a man who has told me everything I am transformed but come and see the man who did it and the Bible says they came in their numbers when they met Jesus they said now we believe not because of what you have seen for we have seen him we have a testimony ourselves there are things that we will continue to do for the kingdom through our conferences through the teachings of the word through the manifestations of God's power and grace by the time you change by the time favor begins to work in your life by the time your prayer life comes alive and you come and stand here before the people of God and say look at my life this is my former self this is who God has shown mercy somebody seated somewhere somebody seated outside somewhere somebody following online will look and say my God I was just about to give up God is glorified when the saints are not silent about his faithfulness there is a difference between testifying declaring his goodness and bragging bragging puts you at the center and you direct people to focus on you it is by my power and the might of my hand that koinonia is running like this that is not a testimony that is pride god is not glorified in that mama by the time you put four of your children and say everybody look at this I was not educated I didn't go to school but I prayed a sincere prayer say mother raise my children look at them now one of them works with the government one of them is a consultant one of them is a politician somewhere one of them is a nation builder somewhere somebody will look at a frail uneducated woman and look at these giants that stand before her that is a testimony the person will now open his Bible and say I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy now you will understand that scripture because there is an individual that embodies it for someone you need to say Lord I am available testify to me I am available let the nation see what you can do through my life let the nation see that you can build through my life you can bless through my life you can change through my life you can impart through my life Every time I come here to preach, I'm motivated by my love for Jesus. Number two, I'm motivated by my love, my passion, my commitment for you. But I'm also motivated by the fact that my standing here will give the nations a chance to once again see what Jesus can do through yielded vessels. Are we together? It is the reason why sometimes, even though it is very uncomfortable to share certain testimonies, we know we are bound with the covenant of revealing his glory and sometimes we just have to look beyond the perceptions that people will have over those testimonies and still tell the nations that he can help men and still tell the nations that he can lift them by the time you carry your tea and your bread and you lift it up to the nations and say nations i was once a hungry person outside but i believed in jesus look at tea look at bread but this has not distracted me I'm introducing you not to the tea and the bread. The tea and the bread is just an evidence. I'm introducing you to the giver of that tea and that bread. God beats his chest from the throne and says, you did this for me. One million people have been convinced that I am faithful through your witness. It is called doxazo, a display of the grace and the glory of God. When God does great things through my life and through this ministry, Sometimes when people send me text messages commending and saying all kinds of nice things, I'm happy and blessed honestly. But the ones that move me is when they say we have seen God glorified. We have seen my faith has been stirred up. I love Jesus now. I believe in him. I was about to give up. We have been taught that when people serve God, they fail in life. But your life is proving that there is honor to priesthood. There is dignity when men serve God. Now, I begin to feel the joy that is in the heart of the Father. And let me tell you the truth. When your life 
is determined to reveal him hmm. then he will pour a measure of that glory upon you and the nations will look at you and wonder what sort of a man are you what sort of grace do you carry what sort of possibilities are you commanding even by your life this is what God wants to do in the life of someone this is what God wants to do he wants to change you from the inside out he wants to place a mighty anointing upon you a mighty anointing upon your ministry a mighty anointing upon your life so that when men look at you they will see Jesus when men look at your business they will see his power don't tell me you're an apostle let me see how Jesus is glorified through your apostolic ministry don't tell me you're a prophet don't tell me you're a businessman don't tell me you're a captain of industry don't tell me you're a professional I salute your sacrifice and your investment but he wants to see Doxazo a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people called to show forth it's a mandate called to show forth by the time I see how you sponsor the gospel by the time I see how you feed the hungry and those children you gathered from the street can look up and tell the world Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord you have demonstrated the love of Jesus in practical terms listen to me ladies and gentlemen the mandate in this teaching tonight is number one to experience the God of the Bible and to derive from that experience wisdom to derive from that experience power to derive from that experience wealth among many other possibilities that come from your experience with God and that when God puts you in that position you have it at the back of your mind that you owe it to give him glory that is the idea of that doxazo not just the displaying of his glory but using your results to direct the attention of men back to him unashamedly so by producing fruits by remaining longevity of your impact and finally by declaring before the nations as uncomfortable as it may be you let them know that he can lift men because he lifted me he can bless men because he blessed me he can turn Saul to Paul because he changed my life he can turn Rahab the prostitute to a woman of honor because he took my shame my past whatever and turned me into a sign and a wonder you can tell people that a fearful me as Gideon can become a warrior me as Gideon and they will not doubt because you are the evidence yourself you are not just holding the evidence we are going to pray father I am available be glorified through my life go ahead and pray father I am available be glorified be glorified someone is praying can you sing that song for me be glorified be glorified hallelujah If results fruits bring glory to the name of the Lord if longevity of impact brings glory to the Lord if testimonies and declarations of his mercy and faithfulness brings glory to the Lord it then means anything that fights your result 
is not fighting you, it's fighting God. It then means anything that wants to cut short your impact, that you are up today and down tomorrow, you must see it as an attack against this project of the revelation of Jesus. Anything that robs you of receiving a testimony or having the courage to come and declare his faithfulness must be antichrist. That becomes your final prayer point. Everything that wants to fight results in my life. Everything that wants to fight longevity. Someone you are about to pray. Anything that wants to fight my testifying before the people of God. I come against it now. Go ahead and pray. Doxazo, be glorified. The glory of God revealed through the results of the saints. The glory of God revealed through the wisdom that emanates from the saints. The glory of God revealed through the manifestation of his power in the saints. The wisdom of God, the power of God, the wealth of the kingdom, the favor that flows from believers. Extraordinary supernatural results. Results that cause men to wonder. Demonstrating that God is at work in the world of men. God is at work in the midst of men. God is at work in his body, in his church. God is at work in the midst of his ministers. Take one final minute to pray. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Let your glory be revealed. Be glorified. Doc Zazo. I make the nations by my results respect and accord you the glory that is due your name. By the power and the strength of your life, your wisdom, your favor, your beauty that flows through our lives, that flows like a river through Koinonia. Let the nations know you are God. Let the nations know you are king. Let the nations know you are deliverer. Let them know you are healer. Let them know you are restorer. Let them know you are lifter. Let them know you can bless men. Let them know you can assist a man. You can help men to rise. You can bring dignity to men. I'm about to speak over your life. Please listen. This is the reason why I speak over you every time. This is the reason why there is a miracle service next week. It is the reason why we labor in the word in prayer and in doctrine. So that line upon line, week in, week out, under this grace, you are handed the keys by mercy. It is the reason why he has made us sufficient in his mercy so that we are able to raise a people who can bring him glory. This revelation doxazo must stay in your mind. It is not enough for the nations to see his glory. You must use the result to draw many to him. You must hide behind the cross and let men see him unashamedly. That becomes the key to your survival in this end time. The marketing of flesh will be the undoing of many great men. Consciously or unconsciously, directly or indirectly, our hearts must be stayed at revealing Jesus. Now the blessing, I speak over you in the name that is above all names. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, it says, and God is able to make all grace abound. Whether you are in business, in ministry, politician, captain of industry, an entrepreneur, whatever I decree and declare, every dimension of grace it will take for your life to command fearful results in this season. May that anointing rest on you. In this season, may that unction rest upon you. Rest upon your business. Rest upon your ministry. Rest upon your family. Rest upon your children. Rest upon your spouse. Rest upon the works of your hands. In the name of Jesus.
I speak over your life, no going down. I say it again, no going down. The power that fights your remaining goes down for your sake. The power that fights your reputation goes down for your sake. The power that fights your testimony goes down for your sake. It will be good news all the days of your life. From one stride after another, one result to another, you will never plateau in life, you will never plateau in destiny. In your finances, go forward. In your relationships, go forward. Your prayer life, go forward. Fasting, go forward. Your word study, go forward. In character, go forward. In the name of Jesus. Extraordinary wisdom, let it rest upon you. The power of the Holy Ghost, causing you to walk in extraordinary dimensions, let it rest upon you. Hear me, wealth by your value and wealth by favor through relationships. This double sworded, this, this two edged sword of wealth by relationships and by value, let it gravitate towards you. Men will arise to help you, arise to help your children. And hear me, every spirit assigned to cut short your life. I decree and declare both the human and spirit agents they go down for your sake wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise we bless you and we honor you you're my glory the lifter up of my head he's my glory the lifter up of my while you are standing, I want to quickly take a minute to make the altar call. If you are not in a functional relationship with Jesus, there is no possibility for manifesting his glory. I want you to let me one minute as we give those who need to make this noble decision an opportunity. You're hearing me speak from across the airwaves. You're here in this auditorium, all the overflows outside. Jesus is calling you to himself. You're saying, Apostle, I need to make this decision genuinely and truthfully. Number two, you are saying, I need to rededicate my life. I want to count one to five very quickly. We have just a minute for you. Leave your seat as quick as you can and come and stand right before me. God bless you. Bless you for your courage. Bless you for overcoming the shame to come stand before God's people. Are you still coming? There's still room at the cross. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. He is my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. One more time. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this noble decision. You are joining them. Join quickly. Following online on the overflows, you can listen and then connect by faith by looking at your screen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the courage. If you're joining them, come quickly. Please lift your right hand high above your head. And I want you to make this confession. Let it be from your heart. You're not just reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, loud and clear. Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i go from glory to glory and grace to grace Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. Based on the authority of your word, I declare their sins forgiven. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken right now over your life. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And I declare that you begin to walk in victory from tonight.
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.